I'm going to show how a pair of basic reports can be built in readiness for later inclusion in a composite report, which is the subject of a separate tutorial video. It's also worth noting that there's a separate, dedicated tutorial video explaining how to build a multi-chart and table report, which covers several concepts that I'll be glossing over quickly. The first report will display a chart and table for each device in a view. The second report will display separate charts for each operationally enabled ports in a view. I'll start by selecting the Report Builder from the main menu Reports page. And then select the Multi-Chart and Table template. To populate the attributes in this report, I'll need to drag them in from an Attributes dashboard. I'm going to bring up a suitable Attributes dashboard in another browser tab, although it would be equally valid to use a separate browser window for this purpose. I'll duplicate the tab, As this is going to be a device-based report, I'll first choose a device from the Explorer. Now I can select the Attributes dashboard from the All Dashboards menu. And sort the attributes into alphabetic order to make it easier to use. The chart is going to display the CPU and memory utilization. I'll drag the CPU utilization metric up to the Builder tab and down to the first entry. Now I'll do the same for the memory utilization. Up to the tab, wait for it to change, and down to the second entry. The table is going to be used to display both the mean and maximum values of the CPU utilization over the period of the report, plus the manufacturer, model, version, and serial number. That's six attributes in total, so I'm going to create columns for them before populating them. I'll take the CPU utilization and drag it into the first column. But rather than displaying the last sample in the reporting period, I'm going to select the mean instead. I'll drag the CPU utilization attributes over again. And this time, select the maximum as the summarization method. Now comes the model. Manufacturer. Version. And serial number. The summarization method doesn't need to be defined for these object attributes. Before I can preview the report, I'm going to need to define where the data comes from. Instead of using the selection technique here, I'm going to use a view. I'll pick my New York view. This is already selected to devices by default, and as this is a device-based report, that's going to be OK. I'll preview it. We've got the two metrics labeled below, and the six pieces of tabular information below that. I'm going to take this opportunity to refine the format of the report. The six object attributes listed in the table below the chart could be displayed in a more compact manner by placing them in three rows of two columns. I can adjust the format of the table using the Organize Layout button. The resulting dialog shows the default single column tabular layout. The Change Layout button allows the placement of the attributes within the table to be defined. Various predefined layouts are listed, some with the table below the chart, some above, and some both above and below. I'd like a single table below the chart with three rows of two columns, but that isn't one of the standard options. Fortunately, there's an easy way to create a custom tabular layout using these options at the bottom. I'll select the custom option, and specify that there is to be a table below the chart with three rows of two columns, and none above. 
I want the CPU utilization mean to appear on the top line on the left. And I can simply drag that attribute to the appropriate table cell. The CPU utilization maximum can go next to it on the right. The model can go on the line below on the left and the manufacturer next to it on the right. I'll put the version on the bottom line on the left and the serial number next to it on the right. One of the best ways to display the device name in this style of report is to place it into the chart title, which appears in large bold text at the top of each chart. The text is defined in the chart title field, but I don't want static text to be used here, as the title wants to be the actual name of the device, which is decided at runtime. Fortunately, there's an easy way to access the object model of the device directly from this field using Stormworks statement language, which is the syntax used by the data management kernel at the heart of the Intuity server. If I simply want to obtain the value of a device attribute, the name of that attribute can be placed within pound or hash symbols to cause it to be accessed. The attribute that holds the device name is called name, so I can simply enter pound or hash name followed by another pound or hash character. The chart legend runs the risk of spilling onto two lines because of the length of the descriptions. I'd really like to make sure it fits on a single line. This can be achieved with a bit of editing of this text used to describe each metric. I'm simply going to shorten the descriptions. Let me do the same thing for the way that they're described in the table. Let's preview the result. And here you can see the chart with the name of the device in bold characters at the top of each chart, the shortened form of the labels, and the six tabular entries in three rows, two columns, and nothing is spilling over the lines. Before moving on to the port report, there's one more change I'm going to need to make to allow this first report to be practically used in the composite report template. I need to strip off the title header and remove all of the margins. When basic reports such as those created using the multi-chart and table template are built, they would normally include a title header and margins around all four sides. This makes them suitable for printing on their own. When this type of report is intended for inclusion into a composite report, the title header and margins are usually not required, and the report builder allows them to be removed for this purpose. The standard header can be removed by unchecking this option. And the margins can be adjusted by clicking the Report Options control. I'm going to set them all to zero. The report is now free of all titles and margins. I'm going to give it a suitable name. And publish it so I can use it later. Here it is in the user defined reports folder. Now let's go ahead and build the basic report that will display the port utilization charts. For that, I'm going to need some port metrics. So I'll use the explorer to navigate to a suitable port. Let's sort them alphabetically again. Now I've already brought up the Report Builder multi-chart template, and as before, I'll disable the generation of the report title header and remove the margins. Down the bottom, I'm going to enable the View mode, but this time, rather than the default device object type, this is going to be based on ports. Let's bring in the attributes. The first one is going to be the inbound utilization. And the second one will be outbound utilization. Now 
Now I could use the table to display the port description, but I'd rather have it included as the chart title, as I did previously with the device name. I'll use the same approach of including the name of the interface description attribute within pound or hash characters. The attribute's name is ifdescra. Currently there's no filter applied, so every port within the scope of the report will have a chart displayed for it. The filter option needs to be enabled using the show advanced options. I can enter a statement using the Stormworks statement language to return true or false to determine whether each port should have a chart displayed or not. There's an attribute on a port called port operational status, which would have a value of 1 if the port is operationally up. A test that will return true if that attribute equals 1 can be added like this. Note the double equals is a test for equality. I'm going to select a small view and preview the result. That looks good to me, although there might be a large number of ports, so it might be wise to make the port charts shorter so that more can be fitted onto each page. I'm going to adjust the chart height down from 240 pixels, which is the default, to 140. And we'll see how that looks. That looks good to me. Before I save the report, I'm going to give it a name and publish it. And here's the result in the user defined reports folder. Now I'm ready to build my composite report, and that's the subject of another tutorial video.